everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I've used pan pastels for my base layers. My preference for putting my base layers down has always been to sand down soft pastel sticks on a fine grit sandpaper and use my soft tools to apply that pigment for my base layers. A few of my Patreon members asked me to give a review on the pan pastels and see how they work for the techniques that I like to use. So I did a black and white tiger portrait which was... Um, all done in black and white I just used three colours of pan pastel and three or four pencils to try and keep the tutorial nice and simple and then there was a few interesting findings that I found when doing that project and because of that I wanted to then do another project using the same three colours of the pan pastels which is the black neutral grey and the white to give my honest opinion on how they work when applying them for your base layers so I have a whole dedicated video over on my Patreon channel which I have found pros and cons for using pan pastels and the finished results that you get vary massively depending on how you apply those to the paper. But for this video, as I say, I just focused on my values. I worked on a black and white photo so I turned that black and white myself so that I could clearly see the light source. That's what drew me to drawing this elephant was the bright highlights on the tusks and that strong light source coming from the left, which you can see in the reference photo in the corner. So given that the three colours, as I mentioned, the black, the white and the neutral grey, I thought this would be an excellent one to make a little focus video on. Now, I had a request from a Patreon member to draw an elephant, so I thought this would work really well and tie in with this second pan pastel project. So as you can see, I'm using the oval shaped soft tool. This is my favourite soft tool. I think it covers the, the pastel matte paper really nicely. I do also have the triangular shaped one, but I find that sponge can actually come off of the applicator quite easily. Whereas, so this is definitely my preference. So what I'm doing here, I'm the biggest tip that I can say is don't apply too much pan pastels to, to your base layers. If you fill the tooth of that paper, you're not going to be able to get your detailed layers on top because you filled the tooth of that paper. It's one of the most common questions that I'm asked. And if your pencils appear to just be gliding over the top of your base layers, that's usually because you've put too much of a thick layer down for your base layer. So during this base layer process with the pan pastels, I'm paying really close attention to my reference photo. I'm mapping in where my lights and my darks are, trying to make sure that I get my shadows and my highlights in the right place, even at this stage. I speak about it on a lot on my YouTube videos and I go in depth on my Patreon videos that I personally think your base layers are really important. It's setting you up for the best start for you to then start putting your detailed layers for your portrait. Now that being said, we can change our base layers and obviously build on them. That's the whole point of how we are layering our pastels. But in order to get these lights and darks in the right place now and accurately, you are going to make your life that much easier when you come to put your detailed layers on top. So you can see that when I am applying my pan pastel base, I'm not focusing on any kind of detail on that elephant at all. I'm just focusing on what I see if I was to be squinting at that photo or applying a blur effect to that photo, which is quite often a good technique to use if you do struggle putting in your base layers because you're too focused on the detail that you see in the reference photo. Once I have then got that base layer down, I then push that pigment with a light pressure with the ends of my fingers just to smooth all that layer out even more. So for this video, I wanted to focus on how I apply my base layers with my pan pastels. If you would like to see the full length project of this, the full four hour video is over on my Patreon and I go through the whole portrait from start to finish. So this is a royalty free photo as well. So if you would like to follow along to that tutorial, the reference photo and the line art is also provided over on Patreon. So before I started working on the pan pastel base on the face, I blocked in the basic shape of the eye and the brightest white reflection in that corner of the eye to make sure that I didn't lose that with these soft, tall sponges. It does take some practice with these sponges to get right close up, like what I'm doing here with the edge of the artwork that you've already started adding detail on, but it just takes practice, but it can be done as you can see here. I'm not blending any of that detail that I've put in the ear on the left, but you do just have to be careful and bear that in mind when you are using these sponges. 
Now, if you're someone who likes to work with your base layers and completely work in separate layers, that is absolutely fine to do that. But my personal preference, as you can see here, is I like to work on a section at a time, get that to about 80% complete and move on to the next bit, which is exactly what I've done here, and continuing to block in those base layers with the pan pastels. So all I've done, as I said, I've mixed the three colours. You don't necessarily have to have the neutral grey. It was just because I wanted to make sure I had that in my set because I knew I was going to be adding other colours to it. You could just do this with just the black and the white. As I mentioned earlier, there are pros and cons that I found when using the pan pastels. But the biggest bonus, as you can see here, is just how softly they blend together. They are buttery smooth. They are really, really nice to work with. But I can see the common complaint that they have where you can fill the tooth of the paper too soon if you pick up too much of the pastel pigment. When you are picking up the pan pastel pigment using your soft tools, you don't want to be rubbing that tool back and forth. You are just wanting to dab at that pan pastel. If you do any back and forth motions with that, you are going to pick up too much pastel pigment and you will be filling the tooth of the paper. That will really limit how much pastel detailed layers you can put on top. The best way of judging whether or not you've got too much of that pastel on that sponge is that you should still be able to see your sketch lines through your pan pastel layer. So as you can see when you, I start to work a little bit lower down on the trunk and the face you're still able to see some of my white sketch lines. Now where I know that I'm going to be applying a darker base layer of my pan pastels, I've gone ahead and used a darker pastel pencil to map in and go over the top of some of these white transfer lines so that I can still see some of these darker lines through my pan pastel base layer. One of the biggest advantages I found from using the pan pastels compared to the soft pastel sticks is there's certainly far less dust. There is not that obvious fall down on the, the pastel pigment that you can sometimes see that drops down onto the paper as you're applying this to your base layers. You just don't get that with the pan pastels. There is still some dust, so sometimes you might hear that it's completely dust free, but I have found there has been some, but it has been far less than when using the soft pastel sticks. Another thing that I've often seen as well is complaints about how expensive pan pastels are which yes when you are investing in them to start with the price will certainly add up however they do seem to last considerably longer than your soft pastel sticks so the pigment goes far longer for what you are paying for so I think you're actually in the long run probably going to be saving money that's just my personal preference from what I found from the couple of projects that I've used but I think because of how well they go down on the bases, and as you can see here, it's like using paint. They blend together beautifully. I think they are something that I'm going to certainly be investing more in over time. My plan is I'm going to, each project I plan for Patreon, so the next one is going to be of a tiger, I'm going to be purchasing colours for that tiger project and then after the tiger I'm going to be um, drawing another wildlife subject so I will then be adding more colours to my set with each project that I do so that's how I'm going to be building up on my pan pastel set that I've got rather than investing in the whole set to start with because that does get quite costly. So here I knew that the pan pastel base layer was going to have to be quite dark so what I mentioned earlier is I usually then map in just with a normal black Carbofello pencil where those black lines and the sketch lines are to make sure that I don't lose them. And as you can see here the white and the black is both showing through that's a good indicator that your base layers of your pan pastels are not too thick. Now what I have to the side of me to blend my pan pastels together is a sheet of tracing paper. I personally think the cartridge or printer paper still has a little bit too much tooth so it was finding that I wasn't able to blend those pigments as well as I was when I practiced that with tracing paper. That's just my personal preference. I just found that the tracing paper, because it is more slick and even more smoother than the normal printer paper, that I was able to blend these pan pastel pigments together even more so. And it just helped to get more of that blended value that I was after. Now when I'm working on something like this for my black and white reference photo, the biggest thing that we're focusing on, 
regardless really this is the same with working in colour but like for this project I wanted to really focus on my light source get my lights and my darks correct to get that really stunning contrast that you can see in the reference photo now for those of you on my patreon you'll see that I found that the black pan pastel was nowhere near as black as the soft pastel sticks that I've got in my set so although I kept this as my pan pastel base layer, I didn't use any soft pastel sticks at all. I did go in at the end of the project and use a black Rembrandt soft pastel stick to get my black shadows really, really dark. Because this was something that I found when I did my lion pan pastel project, the very first one. I did a complete black background for that and I found that the black pan pastel was nowhere near as black as the black Carbofello pencil or as I say the black Rembrandt soft pastel stick so that's certainly one criticism that I've got the black is not pure black it's certainly one that I would still want in my set so that I can then blend it with other colors but just for a black on its own for something like this a project like this I did end up using my soft pastel sticks so this was a focus tutorial over on my Patreon where I was asked to do a focus video on elephant skin. So that's why I decided to do this cropped version. And as you can see, the base layer of the pan pastels worked really well for then applying all those detailed layers on top, which there were many layers for this to get that textured effect of the elephant skin. I was still able to layer endlessly on top, but the key is to make sure you don't fill the tooth of that paper. That's really important. Now that's the one of the main questions that I get asked is what happens if I do fill the tooth of the paper. Now I am someone who hates throwing artwork away because I think we learn from every piece. If you have filled the tooth of the paper it's something to learn from and apply that to your next portrait. So what I would advise doing is maybe get a workable fixative. Now I don't apply any fixatives to my work but if I was to fill the tooth of the paper that is the route I would go down rather than throwing that portrait away. But it would be a workable fixative rather than a final fixative because if you do apply a final fixative layer to your piece it will change the colour and the value. It's just something that fixatives do. However with a workable fixative like if you did fill the tooth of the paper you know you're not finished so it really doesn't matter from that aspect. And the fixative that I found didn't cause as much colour shift was the... It was the Spectrifix. I used a fine mist sprayer bottle and you can then apply that to your portrait to try and get some of that tooth back. Now it is the white balance of my camera that's making my drawing appear a little bit more blue. The pan pastels, the, the black one, is certainly more of a what I would call like a warmer black. So when you do put that down on your on your paper, it doesn't have that blue tint, which some I notice it more in paints, but sometimes it can have that blue tint. The, as I say, it's the camera that's given that illusion on my portrait. It's a lot more warmer in person and there's going to be a finished photo of the portrait coming up shortly where you can see that the, the, the white balance is correct in that photo. The one biggest thing that I would advise if you are mixing a white in with any of your base layers that you've made with your pan pastels, you only need to have a small amount of the white to brighten up any colour that you are using. It's really quite pigmented and I loved that about the pan pastel white. So here is a photo of the finished portrait. As I mentioned, this was a focus tutorial on how to draw elephant skin over on Patreon, which I will link in the description below. And my overall feedback on pan pastels is that they are going to be great for backgrounds. I'm really going to be um, wanting to plan another wildlife project where I've got a scenic background, maybe even a landscape, where I can try my pan pastels because I think they are going to be perfect for that. They blend together beautifully. And as I mentioned, I have a lion video over on Patreon where I found some interesting findings when using the pan pastels. And I always am layering them with my pastel pencils on top because I found that you get rougher details with just the pan pastel base layer. So if that is of interest, as I mentioned, my Patreon link is going to be in the description below. And I use them slightly differently to other artists because I like the softer finish that I was able to get with how I found that I like to layer and use them. But as I say, I am certainly going to be adding more to my 
kit to my two my material list because I think they are a real joy to work with. They really do blend beautifully. So I hope this video was of use. I'd appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you do want to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button. And then it should notify you when I next upload a video here to YouTube.